So today's project is a surprise, another three-wheeler. This one is a, it's an 83 Honda 185. Just picked it up today. Uh, the previous owner says that it runs, but not very well, and it spits gas out everywhere. Um, all I've done so far with it was confirm by the VIN that it is the 83 185. And I took off the fenders and seat already because, uh, well, I did that, and then I remembered that I make YouTube videos. So that's off, but that's just a lever in the back. Nothing complicated there. Um, so he says that it leaks gas. So first thing I'm going to do is turn the gas on. And he is right. This thing absolutely gushes fuel to the point where I can't even really tell you which part it's coming out at. So I'm not even going to bother attempting to start it. It's uh, That carburetor has to come off. So to do that, so I don't have to pull the gas tank, but I think it's going to make it just a little bit easier on me. So that's just going to be a single bolt back here. It'll lift up and slide backwards once I pull the fuel line off. So I'll get that off of there and then get to the carburetor. Now I've got the gas tank out of my way here. Uh, at the rear of the carburetor is just the boot that goes to the air filter. That's just a clamp with Phillips head, so I have that. And then there's the rubber intake part that goes from the cylinder head to the carb. The carb hooks to that with a couple of 10 millimeter nuts, and that boot hooks to the engine with some 8 millimeter bolts. Uh, it's up to you, I guess, how you want to do this. Usually I end up pulling the intake from the cylinder head. It just seems like it gives me a lot more room to just pivot it and pull it out this way. So I'm going to get that off now. We'll start with the boot on the other side. Okay, the boot is loose. So I'm going to pull the intake from the head. And then the top of the carburetor where the throttle cable goes in just unscrews. It is spring loaded, so it might jump a little bit. Let that out of the way. So it's unhooked and it should just slide right out. I'll wiggle a little bit just to get out of the boot. Um this one has a random wire hooked to it. Not an electrical wire, literally like thin mechanics wire. And I have no idea why. So I guess we're just going to get rid of that. There is zero reasons for that. I, I, I don't know. Okay, this carburetor should be a Kaihen, but instead it is a Jin Y. So that probably explains a lot of why it's leaking, but we're going to see if we can do anything with it anyways. I'm going to drain it, and I'll get on the bench and start ripping it apart. All right, so I've got the carburetor off on the bench here. I did figure out what that random wire was. It was literally hooked to the fuel line, uh, on the hose clamp and pulling down because the fuel inlet for this carburetor just pops right out. So they had it just holding it to shove that in. That is not okay. We're not going to put it back together that way. I pulled it off with the intake on there. Because I have it off, I'm going to pull the other part too and just make sure that those O-rings are okay. If we get an air leak there, it won't run right. Being the Chinese knockoff carburetor, this thing is going to need all the help it can get running correctly. So a small air leak would still be devastating for this. So we're going to pop that apart. My camera doesn't zoom real well, so you're kind of going to have to just bear with me describing what I'm doing. Yeah, pull that off, and that already is fine. Not a whole lot of dirt in the main 
heating tube to get the float bowl off. From what I could tell when it was on the bike, the uh, from what I could tell when it was on the bike, it looked like it was leaking not only from the overflow but from the bowl gasket itself. So a little bit of everything. So we probably have well a bad bowl gasket because these screws were tight enough. So if that's leaking, that's pretty much the only other option. And then either something in the needle and seat or an improperly adjusted float level. Um, I have a bunch of little black flakes in the carb bowl. Not real sure what's going on with that. like the float level is adjusted a little bit wrong and those flakes are everywhere so I'm assuming there's going to be some of those down there in the needle and see so we'll pop that out just gonna push this pin that the float pivots on get that out of there it will just rise right out the rubber tip of the needle is still soft. There is some stuff down in the seat. So we'll just get the carb clean and get rid of that. Might as well spray a little bit in here too. really are. Whatever they are, they clean out real nice and easy. So I at least have that going for me. And, you know, carburetor's off. Might as well check the jets, too. Pilot jet, pull it out. And there is not even a hole in that, so it would not have idled at all. Best tool I found for those is torch tip cleaners. Ideally, with an OEM one, there'd be numbers on this, so I'd at least know it was the right one. I don't have that because it's the aftermarket. that out now with the torch tip and then spray some cleaner through it. We'll set that one aside. We'll move on to the main jet. Looks like it wants to come out with the whole nozzle itself, which is fine. Spray some cleaner through it. A lot of times with that, I like to spray through there and cap this end. If there's a bunch of little tiny holes in there, if I cap the end, at least on the display screen I see on my camera, it looks like it's showing that, but all those holes have to be clear. So as long as that stuff's coming out of that, we know that that one's good. Looks clean. It also doesn't have any numbers on it, so I can't guarantee they're the right size. Unfortunately, I just kind of have to deal with that. And anywhere that fuel has to go through here, spray some cleaner. 
So you have the pilot screw here. Uh, I'm going to tighten it first real slowly and just see how many turns out it is. Okay, it was two and a half. And the way you set that, you bottom it all the way out gently and count how many turns back out you do. There is a preliminary setting for it when you rebuild something like this and then you adjust it as the bike needs it. I don't know what it is for this and I don't have a manual handy. Um, two and a half seems like a lot though. Yeah, she just said two and a half is typically pretty high. On this one, it's on the engine side of the carburetor. So the more you loosen this, the more fuel and air mixture it lets through while that jet is in use. I'm going to put it at one and a half. That sounds more reasonable. <clears throat> and I can adjust it once it's on the bike and we're running again. But that seems like a decent spot to start. Uh, other than that, all the passages seem clear. A little bit of some sort of corrosion in here. Whatever it is immediately vaporizes with carb cleaner though, so don't really have to worry about that. So put the jets back in. I'm gonna spray this pilot jet one more time because I can't really see into it very well. Whereas the main jet everything is very visible. I at least do have liquid going through it when I spray my cleaner. It appears to be good. It's just since I can't see it, I figured I'd spray it again. So put those back in. They don't have to be super tight. Put the float back in. Just the needle slides into the hole, pin in, and this is another thing that does have a setting you could find in the manual uh, that I don't have, but usually the float will be about level with the bottom of this if you set it upside down. It's, it's close. I think we're going to leave that. If I have to pull it again and adjust it, I will. Still a little bit more of that stuff in here in the bottom. If I spray it again, it's just going to scratch away a little bit and just keep rinsing it out. Okay, that's cleaned out. Now, this bolt gasket actually doesn't look that bad. It seems soft enough. It's still tall. It's not squished in there. And I'm thinking it may have just looked like it was leaking to me just because of how it was leaking everywhere else. So I'm going to assemble it with that gasket still. Yeah, I can feel it actually squishing the gasket when I put the bowl, the bowl back on it. So I think that's going to be okay. And I'll real loosely tighten all these screws before anything. Can't really tighten them in a cross pattern because there's only three. Get them mount it back to the intake boot. I guess it's not really a boot, but the, the intake. In my opinion, it's not technically an intake boot unless it's just one that goes around and clamps. But Okay, so the only thing I really have to do before I can put that back on is figure out that fuel inlet. It, uh... It definitely does not like the idea of going back in there. Like, I know it's a press fit. It might seal better if it was pushed in there farther. I can see a rust line that shows maybe where it used to be. So I think what I'm going to do for that is I just reached over there, kind of used my vise as a press to push it all the way in. It does fit a whole lot tighter than it did before. Like it actually fell out when I was taking it off. I'm going to do that. 
And then I'll just plan on getting another carburetor at some point that's a little bit higher quality than Amazon can offer me. So I could potentially test this off the bike, hook a line up to it and see if it leaks. But where's the fun in that? Let's put it back on the bike. Remember to start both bolts before you tighten either bolt. Otherwise you might get to the end and the hose will be gone. It's in the boot going to the air filter. Just got to tighten that clamp up. Alright, so I have a bolt at the back. The, in, the boot going to the air filter is tight again. Just have to slide the throttle back down into there. It will only fit one way. There's a long slot on one side, and then just a little cut away on the other. The long slot lines up with the part in the carburetor, and the shorter slot is for your idle. Not really liking how this throttle cable is routed. It seems like it stretches. So I'm going to take a look at that before I put everything back together as well. But the top of this just threads right back on. I don't like the way that, that throttle cable is routed. So I'm going to reroute that to give it a little bit more slack. So with that all back in there, I rerouted the cable so it had a little bit more slack in it. So now we're going to slide this gas tank back on. Under the rubber grommets. I did put a new gas line on it. The other one was in pretty nasty shape. Gotta figure out the proper routing for the gas line. Doesn't really make a whole lot of sense anywhere I seem to put it. That's it, right there. There's that. I'll get my bolt that holds that down. <clears throat> I'm going to turn the fuel on and see if there's any leaks. There doesn't appear to be any leaks. So at this point, I could go through and make sure I have spark and compression. The guy did say it ran, and I figure it's worth just giving it a few pulls anyways before I check that. If it doesn't start, then we'll move on to that. But before I do, I am going to check the oil. Always check the oil. There is nothing showing on that stick at all. So that's a good place to start. Took quite a bit of oil, so I'm glad I checked that, or we could have been in a bad situation. You know, it's an old Honda, but it can only do so much. So everything's checking out now. So I'm going to make sure it's in neutral. It is. And throttle moves freely on, and we're going to see if it starts. Take it off my car. 
part and put the plastic back on it too, because I think it's going to run great. Needs a little air in one of the back tires. So I think I'll do that and we'll fire it up and go. about wraps it up. Um, yeah, it was low on oil. It doesn't seem to be leaving a cloud, so I don't know, maybe, I don't know why it was low, but it was low. Top that off. It runs great. I took it down the road off camera because I didn't have a camera I could take. Uh, seems to be pretty quick. Brakes work. Runs good. Uh, Thanks for tuning into the Grant Garage. Like and subscribe if you'd like to. Let me know what else you'd like to see. Although, let's be realistic, it'll probably be three wheelers. See you next time.